Welcome everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Bills and today we're dealing with the 2021 Bentley Continental GT Convertible. Now this has 1058 horsepower, 976 pounds feet of torque from its 6.3 litre twin turbo charged W12 engine. The car itself now weighs 4147 pounds, still has its all wheel drive system but it now has off-road tyres and off-road suspension to go along with it. And it can earn a 16 2.887 seconds, 0 to 105.318 seconds, and go to a top speed of 253 miles an hour. So this is the standard engine in this car, just fully upgraded. Now I could have put the uh, Continental Super Sports engine in this, but it would have only provided a little bit of extra horsepower, a little bit of extra torque, and slightly less in the way of weight. But I wanted to see what this original engine in this could do. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it's still got more than 400 horsepower over what it had originally and plenty of extra in the way of torque while still being lighter as well so um, yeah in terms of stats it's all fairly good really off-road uh, capability, braking, launch, acceleration and speed are all excellent obviously we're not going to get up to its top speed but it's nice to have that little bit of leeway only issue is going to be the handling which is amazingly down to the weight but the all-wheel drive system should hopefully keep that in check. So the only other Bentley we've had on this series so far has been the Bentley Turbo R, which managed a time of 3 minutes 26.648, so not particularly fast, but then again it is a uh, car that is 30 years older than this one, so this should do a, a bit better than that car. As much as I like the Turbo R, it's far from a uh, capable uh, off-roader, as well as a race car as well. So. Um, this should definitely do better. And for now, that is going to be the case, because no issues at all. Obviously, it helps that the all-wheel drive system is native to this car, so you know that's not an additional thing it's going to have to deal with. But you know, these Continentals have never really been low-slung sports cars, so even though it's got the off-road suspension that did not raise it all that much. I think it was even less than a half an inch. So, um, yeah, these cars have always been a bit of a uh, halfway in between an SUV and, uh, you know, a Grand Tourer in terms of ride height. So, yeah, I have no real worries about this dealing with the off-road stuff. Especially with that all-wheel drive system, like I said, is native to the car is the worry is whether or not that we're going to be able to deal with the quite enormous amount of weight while going at the speeds and through the tricky corners that we have to deal with on this course. Very easy to let that weight get ahead of you and struggle to slow it down. Far more agile than you might expect it to be. No, it's no, you know, hot hatchback or supercar or anything, but given its size and weight, you'd expect it to be a lot more cumbersome, and yet it's just not. I'm sure it could be if it wanted to be, you know, or if you got into a tricky enough situation, but for now, it's actually quite agile. that we come across is going to be easily swatted away given the immense weight of this car. I wouldn't recommend going an off-road course over like this with the roof down in real life. You get numerous amounts of rocks, dust, dirt, whatever else coming right at you. Especially at these kind of speeds. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be properly quick, but it's really consistent. It's really had an issue. And anything that has an immense amount of weight and only a, a, a you know a middle ground amount of horsepower for a series like this is never going to be the fastest of things, but we're definitely going to be the fastest Bentley that we've had so far. 
with a time of 3 minutes 18.876 so that's actually quicker than the Jaguar in the previous episode which weighed nearly a thousand uh, pounds less but granted did have nearly a hundred horsepower less and nearly 200 pounds feet of torque less but that car was a lot more um, yeah, lighter and supposedly better in terms of handling but this despite its weight and the um, you know the size of the thing in the first place has uh, done really really well there so uh, yeah 3 minutes 18.876 puts us comfortably into the um, top 60 uh, which was not the case for the Jaguar in the previous episode so yeah that puts us ever so slightly behind the Lamborghini Cyan Roadster and by ever so slightly I mean by 0 0.002 of a second um, but we are ahead of the Lincoln Code number 100 Cyan Racing 03 the above 695 Piposto, the Jaguar from the previous episode by, uh, by 0.3 of a second or thereabouts as well as the McLaren 620R, Cooper Urban Rebel Concept and the Lexus RCF Track Edition but we are also slightly behind the Cooper Teverscon Concept, the Porsche 550A Spider, Audi RS e-tron GT and the Nissan Fairlady Z but yeah, I don't think there's really any other kind of car to compare this against. So um, yeah, but as a GT, you know, heavy GT cars that are convertible, the goal this has done really rather well, quite frankly. And yeah, it was just wholly consistent throughout the uh, the downhill run there. No real foot put, uh, didn't put a foot wrong really. I think it got bogged down at one point coming out of a corner or you know going into a corner where it slid round a bit. But outside of that, yeah, it's just really really consistent and uh, yeah, fun to drive and. Yeah, more than able to, to use its extra power and torque to a great effect. So, on the whole, a fantastic car. Nonetheless, so, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.